Welcome to Sculpture Studios. This video marks another little milestone for the channel as our 300th video. Sure, we've taken videos down in the past and tweaked and reworked things from time to time, and yes, the channel count might show a few less than that, but that's because there are a few hidden videos that we're not allowed to make public yet. But collectively, we now have 300 completed project videos uploaded to the page. What an utterly brilliant piece to create for this little landmark, a piece of semi-relief wall art in the shape of a cow profile. This is being made for a commercial kitchen in Amsterdam, commissioned by the renowned studio of Pete Bone. This is going to be larger than life size, at around 4 metres long and just under 2.5 metres tall. Now, the term semi-relief means this is going to be something of a more flattened design, as though a flattened version of half a cow is protruding from the wall. The finish on this is just going to be plain white, and this is so that the artists at the other end in the Netherlands can plaster this to the wall to make it blend in. Here I am, just starting to make this large cow. It'll be broken down into two halves, so it can be transported relatively tight and neatly more cost effective for the client, but that's how big I'm going to be carving it. The outline has been gridded up onto our large blocks of polystyrene and a hot wire has been used to cut the peripheral shape and to take large chunks of foam off quickly. Aidan then goes to work with a nail and wire brushes, nothing fancy, just carving everything by hand. Oh, it's a nice moving piece you've got here, Aidan. You have fun carving it. Very good. I was counting the feet and I was worried if I was lactose. <laughs> Worst jokes I've ever heard. We keep the client up to date with images along the way to make any amendments, as here in the polystyrene stage things are a lot easier to amend than trying to make changes later on. With so many puns relating to cows, we are really trying not to milk it and just skim past them, but we can't and always help ourselves. Yep. <laughs> Once the master carving's been confirmed, we're going over with a layer of tinfoil. Now, I know what you're thinking, the secret of the sticky back tinfoil will now be revealed, but this is actually the other foil that we use. This is a very low micron thin foil that we're adding to the form using a watered down wallpaper paste. This will allow the polystyrene, albeit probably broken up into pieces, to be removed from the inside of the fiberglass once we've given this a blanket coat. We could keep the polystyrene inside the job, but even though poly isn't particularly heavy, we want to keep this as light as possible, and we also want access to the back of the sculpture to add internal metalwork. We've gone over with glass fibre as a relatively thin, lightweight shell, and to give this shape a bit of rigidity, we've beefed up around the edges with a couple of extra layers. That was just another little cow joke there. Once all of the excess material has been trimmed around the perimeter, we need to sand the whole form down to remove any sharp points. Fiberglass has a naturally fibrous texture, as it's literally fibres of woven mat, so we go over the entire form with a flow coat layer of resin. This will soften that texture and can be sanded back to an even smoother finish. We mentioned earlier that we're creating this in two parts. Though this is a little more work for us as we now have to make up a join line, it works out to be beneficial in the long run. This saves the client a lot of money on transportation as they're no longer needing to hire a significantly larger vehicle, particularly as this is going all the way to Amsterdam. 
With this in mind, we need to make sure this is a really clean join line, so we're splitting the job in two, creating an interior flange that can bolt together, and we're adding a resin filler mix to ensure that there's no obvious divide when it's set up on site. So because we've put the squidge on this side first, we've then covered it in a sticky back tin foil, put a Vaseline on it so that this edge won't stick to it, squidged it up against it, and now we've got a perfectly straight seam line as opposed to the wavy fiberglass line we originally had. Very nice indeed. So here we've got the interior of the cow, and in order for them to fix the fiberglass uh, shell to the wall, we're adding metalwork in the back. And what we're doing, we're cutting bars to fit inside the legs, and then we're adding these metal brackets that will wrap around the inside of the cow, which we can then laminate to the job, so the metalwork is securely held in place, and it's nice and solid. What we're doing now, we're currently lining them up, putting the brackets, and we've bent them to the shape of the fiberglass form, and we're gonna tack these, and then Aiden's gonna weld them properly, so that these are gonna be nice and secure. Goes in there like that. Beautiful. We've gone over the steel with a red oxide paint to protect the surface from oxidisation. We've now laminated the bars into the fibreglass cow shell via the tabs at either end. We've kept this metalwork just shy of the edge of the fibreglass by a couple of millimetres, more into the job than out. This way, if the job is pulled to the wall via the bars, the fibreglass can pull nice and flush to the wall surface. This is opposed to the metalwork protruding out of the back of the job and preventing this from happening. We're now spraying the interior of the cow to neaten the job up as a whole. Though the public will only ever see this from the front, it's the client that we're working for at the end of the day, so we want to give them a nice professional finish all round. We're now going over with a grey primer, so the white paint has a good base layer to key onto the fibreglass with. This grey layer, as well as being a base coat, would also show up any imperfections that still might require attention. What with this being a relatively simple shape however, and the amount of times we've been over it already, it's straight on with our 2K car body paint in white once the grey primer has set. This was then taken to Amsterdam in a much more conveniently sized and cost effective van, thanks to the sculpture being broken down into two pieces. The cow was then set up in a large food distribution company at VHC Jongens, and features on one of their walls in their training kitchen classroom. If you're still trying to wrap your head around how we've got 300 videos uploaded, then why not go and take a look into the vast depth of our channel and see what you might have missed. You're more than welcome to dig all the way back to the beginning of time here at Sculpture Studios, where basically home videos were first taken as just a record. There you can see how the videos have developed into the more comprehensive media we create today. The history of the channel is just as important to us as the history of the work, so go and see what else we've made. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.